welcome uh, to uh, cybersecurity for a new America. I come out of foreign policy originally, so for me, particularly foreign policy, national security, when I hear cybersecurity, I think national security. I think defense, I think countries, I think the future of war in many ways. And that is what a large number of people in this town think of when they think of cybersecurity. But of course, recently, when we think of cybersecurity, we, also, we don't just think of countries, but we think of companies. And we think about how those two things are intertwined. Because if we're talking about Sony and cybersecurity, we're also talking about the United States and North Korea. So now we think of cybersecurity as military, but also commercial, and how those things uh, are intertwined. But of course, independently of national security, companies are worried about cybersecurity simply from a straightforward commercial point of view. So those two areas, I think most people uh, think are, are, yes, right down the fairway when you talk about cybersecurity. But that's only a part of the picture. And the large part of what we're going to do today is to flesh out that picture. So obviously, the, other, the next place we think about cybersecurity, which is rarely married, is consumers. So think about uh, Target, uh, think about all the places in which consumers, all of us like me, who go online and do most of our shopping online, hand out our information. Consumer security is cybersecurity every bit as much. But then think also about students and job seekers and readers. Some of New America's cybersecurity work has been done in libraries, the place where many low-income people first encounter computers and have very little idea about what security means. Often they are either completely uh, worried to, and afraid to do anything, which of course harms them in this world, or they have no sense of what the, what the dangers are. So educating lower income people or middle income people, but people who, and frankly a lot of older people, who are encountering the cyber world for the first time, that is every bit as much cybersecurity. Activists, activists in this country, activists uh, around the world, people who are doing things that governments may not love, our government, other governments, even people who are doing things that corporations may not love. Citizens. Citizens' cybersecurity is every bit as important as national high-level cybersecurity. So thinking about cybersecurity in the context of all the different sectors of the United States and thinking about how as we go forward to different kinds of conflict, a new economy, a new and much more active citizenry in a politics that has to be renewed. That's what we're thinking about when we talk about cybersecurity. There are lots of opportunities here, uh, as I just laid out. We've got lots of little silos. One of the first things New America wants to do is break down those silos and bring together people who are thinking about cybersecurity, whether they use that term or not, in, from multiple vantage points. We want uh, to learn from all those sectors. We want to collect ideas uh, from those sectors and think about the newer ideas in terms of how we uh, both conceptualize but also actually implement cybersecurity. Uh, we also want new voices. Uh, and as I've described, there are many people who are working on cybersecurity from a citizen point of view, from an activist point of view, who very rarely actually talk to folks who are thinking about it from a national security point of view. And yet we absolutely have to bring uh, those new voices into the debate. So New America combines all those things. I am the president and CEO. You have to have a little ad for New America here. Um, we bring together a tremendous international security team, but we also bring together the Open Technology Institute with people who are working uh, uh, on uh, consumer uh, and citizen security, uh, and more importantly, simply keeping the internet as open as we possibly can, consistent with the demands of security uh, for everyone. Uh, we're also trying to do this in a, uh, multi from, from a multiply geographic perspective. A couple of people here from California were saying that they should have little 
circles on their badges to indicate uh, that they are both tired and cold, uh, and certainly on the cold uh, front. Uh, so we want to be doing this here in DC, in New York, uh, in California, and we hope in other nodes around the country, bringing together new voices, big ideas, technologists, and policy experts from multiple places uh, in the country. We also want younger voices. Uh, it is, in the State Department, uh, Alec Ross would always talk about digital natives and digital immigrants. I'm a digital immigrant. We, <laughs> most of the people who are making decisions on cybersecurity are digital immigrants. We need the digital natives. We need many, many younger voices in this conversation. Uh, and we need media relationships that expand beyond the more specialized columns and uh, policy outlets uh, and journals uh, that speak to a very specific group of people. Cybersecurity has to be demystified uh, and talked about in the same way we would talk about any other major public issue, whether that's education uh, or conflict or health. New America thinks about itself in terms of big ideas, in terms of being at the intersection of policy and technology, and, and in terms of being connected to communities. What we hope to do with our cybersecurity initiative uh, is to create networks, national networks, with lots of new voices uh, in ways people who are not here but who can be an equal part uh, of this debate. We want to do this nationally, and we want to do this internationally. If I were standing in Germany at the moment, this debate would look very different, uh, and the United States would not look wonderful, either from a national point of view or a commercial point of view or a consumer uh, point of view. So we want to do this uh, internationally as well. Uh, we want to focus on big ideas, that is our trademark, and solutions. Um, also, events that we can hold both physically, as here, uh, and virtually. And finally, uh, we want to think about how you implement actual solutions. So what are people doing on the ground in individual libraries or uh, NGOs or companies or cities? Uh, th how are these different groups thinking about cybersecurity, but not just thinking about it, actually doing it? And how can we plug into those networks and learn from them? Uh, finally, uh, I want to end with what we don't know, and what we, what we uh, a little note of humility. We obviously don't have all the answers, that's why we're, we're starting uh, what we hope will be a multi-year initiative. Uh, we are anxious to, in, to build networks uh, and create a very inclusive project. We are well aware that there are other groups in universities and policy institutes, and we think in cities and in NGOs uh, working on these issues, uh, and this should be what I think of as a collaborative coalition, right? Some, lots of people thinking about different dimensions uh, of this problem. We also want to include the folks in the government who are thinking about these issues, not only national government, but again, city government, even local in some places. Uh, and Finally, uh, in terms of, of really learning things and advancing ideas that are uh, not part of the current debate, it is essential to be convening unlikely bedfellows. It is essential to bring together the civil libertarians with the national security uh, establishment, not just in terms of, yes, we want everything to be consistent with everything else. It's easy to say that. The problem, of course, is there are really tough trade-offs to be made. And we want people who are advocating for lower income groups of various kinds and how they engage with the cyber world, talking to large corporations, just as examples, bringing a very diverse group of people together. Uh, and we will be starting today, uh, and I, for one, am ex very excited because I actually get to sit and listen and take notes and think uh, all day. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our first panel and welcome, uh, and we're delighted to have you here. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's a little bit cold <laughs> today, but we have to go through. So what is it like to get hacked uh, for your beliefs? I believe uh, to get hacked in the US is really different than to get hacked in, in Europe or in Middle East, especially nowadays. So I will go through uh, kind of like my personal story and why I'm here in the US today. So. 
back to 2011, I used to live in, in uh, beautiful Damascus, and uh, at that time, the civil, of, uh, the civil movement started uh, at the beginning of 2011, and then a lot of people, they joined the civil movement when it was peaceful. And most of these people, they were really aware about how our government is really strong uh, regarding the surveillance and the technology they had, and they still have actually, actually regarding surveillance and all of, all of control uh, for the internet uh, and the infrastructure. At that time, the Syrian government used to block the whole social network and uh, only the people with a good background knowledge, with the knowledge about cybersecurity, they had access to the social network because it was blocked. Uh, in a very smart movement, at March 2011, the Syrian government removed the old block on the social network. And these people who they were like, they needed to see what's going on. They joined the social network and it became a really huge movement. It was good for the government because they were collecting information, but it wasn't, it was not, it was not only for collecting information. It was not only for social engineering, let's say, uh, uh, prospect, but it went more into deep into cyber, uh, cyber attacks. Uh, back, to, back, back to May, to th uh, actually June 2011, in old Damascus, I got the chance to meet one of the British journalists that he came to, to film uh, uh, or to film a documentary about the civil movements. Uh, Sean McAllister, he worked for Channel 4, and uh, he asked me actually if he can join me in the, in the training that I used to do for activists and lawyers back at that time, teach them exactly how to protect themselves online. And he filmed that, and, but there was kind of agreement between us, like, okay, I will allow you to film this, but at the same time you have to, uh, I mean, at least, encrypt your data and you let me teach you how to encrypt your data because you're here in a, tur in a, in a, in a tourist visa and they can't just arrest you for any uh, matter. And I teach him, actually I taught him how to encrypt his data and he's a filmmaker, he know how to put blur on our faces. Uh, he did his movie, he filmed a lot of people, a lot of, of, a lot of uh, very important sources also. Uh, October 18th, it was 1 a.m. at night, I received a message from uh, a mutual friend, and he was actually assisting Sean, that Sean McAllister got arrested in a coffee shop, and I have to go hide myself, because they arrested a lot of people that they work with, and they got his storages, his backup. In my message, I asked him, is the data was encrypted? Do they got access to the video? He said, yes, they got access to everything. Actually, he did not encrypt anything. And, and it was like, kind of like underestimating for the power of the government back at that time. In a very famous coffee shop in Damascus, he was sitting and having conversation with other guy, and both of them, they got arrested. Uh, Milan Jamal, he was with him at that time, and he's still in jail until today. Manal Janabi, she was arrested for three months. Then they released her, and actually they they removed her from the country because she is not Syrian. Uh, if you're talking about cybersecurity for, uh, for activists, but actually it is important to know that technology today is really helping. Technology is playing two roles, and they are very two important roles. It's connecting people very good, but the other side, there are a lot of technologies that they're helping governments to get access to information. I believe now in the new modern movements, governments get access more to the information than comparing to before. Uh, a lot of companies, Blue Code, which is a US-based company, I mean, uh, it's, uh, it was the main provider for, for DPI technology for the Syrian government, deep packet inspection, with, with, which allowed the government to get access to the, even, even to know the encrypted data that we were transferring between uh, users, actually, they were transferring in Syria. Uh, for example, a very simple, face recognition technology that Facebook used, imagine if that technology, or actually it is available, in the hand of Syrian governments or any other repression governments, how, how powerful that will be. Uh, today, I, uh, ISIS, and actually I don't know if you've heard, uh, ISIS started to develop a malware. Comparing between the Syrian government, which they started developing malware after six months of their social engineering hacking tactics, ISIS started with this, with the malware recently, and here they are, uh, very active. They, they have access more than the Syrian government, by the way, because they are not under sanctions, as most of them, they have the foreigner passports. Uh, so here we are, I moved today to the US, uh, 
IC project is a, is a, it's, it's a group of engineers we're trying to help uh, people. We're trying to connect uh, people on the ground with technology makers here in the US and different places, explaining for them that this technology is good to use, but this is not good to use. You have to improve this technology to make it better to help people. At the same time, we're trying to, to protect uh, people on the ground by teaching them. And at the end, I just want to mention that it's not only Syria. There are, it's half of the world that it's been ruled by governments like the Syrian government and many other governments. And today I can see that the threat is not only, uh, it's not, they are not only threatened Syrian people, but they're threatening everybody outside. And we've seen recently how ISIS was active online at the same time the Syrian, uh, Syrian electronic Arm army was uh, active online. Uh, technology is so fast, I see a lot of, a lot of growing up uh, in, in a technology that at the same time I see there is a misconnection between all of these departments. That's what exa exactly led us to the problems that we used to face uh, in Syria. So I hope uh, a conferences like this, events like this will bring people from different places so they can talk to each other and understand what's good and what is bad. Thank you so much.